What am I going to do with Pedro Neto? And am I going to take my first hit of the season? It's my Game Week 11 team selection. Starting off by looking then at my goalkeeper and defenders, I feel very hard done by by Emiliano Martinez. Could have kept a clean sheet against Luton weekend just gone. Unfortunately, he conceded and it was an own goal. <laughs> it was an own goal by him. So I don't think I could have got much more unlucky with how that game panned out for me. I'm backing him to hopefully keep a clean sheet against either Nottingham Forest or Fulham to justify the price I paid for him. I thought I was being clever by buying a low-owned goalkeeper with a reasonable track record in FPL, but it's not worked out so far for me. Matty Cash, I mean, he's a shoe in for the next couple of game weeks. Not in Forest and Fulham. Got lucky, of course, with a clean sheet. He got subbed off before that Martinez own goal. Dan Byrne and Udogi, both of those potentially could be leaving my team, and this is part of the hit that I might be taking. Dan Byrne. I'm not massive on his potential against Arsenal. I think he could well blank in that game. I do expect Arsenal to score. Then he's got a game against Bournemouth, which is pretty good. Then he plays Chelsea. To be honest, without Botman in the team as well, I'm a little bit less keen, if you like, on the Newcastle defence. And then Udogi as well. Hopefully he's fit to play Chelsea. If he is, I think it makes sense to keep him in my team and start him. I do think Spurs will beat Chelsea and could well keep a clean sheet. But if he's still injured... He could well be, well, either a transfer out or a benching. I've got to make a decision, basically, on my defence. Do I take a hit? One player I could be bringing in for either of those two guys, depending on, obviously, Udogi's fitness and burn, whether I think he's worth selling, is Simicass. He's gone up now to 4.6 million. It's quite obvious why. He's, a lot of people are bringing him in, and you can see why. I mean, fantastic fixtures coming up. It doesn't look like Andy Robertson is going to play again this calendar year. That shoulder dislocation, I reckon it's going to keep him out till about January. Liverpool, while well, Simicast has been in the side, have certainly looked better defensively, although obviously the opposition they played haven't been great. But Simicast has started two Premier League games and kept two clean sheets. He does look to be the first choice left back without Robertson in the team. There doesn't seem to be anyone else in that squad filling the position other than Simicast. And apart from the Man City game, where you could feasibly bench him, to be honest, at 4.6 million, the fixtures are really nice. Another option I really like, it's not quite as shiny and exciting as Simicast, but Mark Gahey is just a set and forget option at 4.5 million. I think when you look at Anderson, who's obviously come away with a couple of attacking returns this season so far, he's 0.4 million cheaper than him now. And I would say, regardless of the attacking returns, their underlying numbers have been quite similar. And Gahey could have had a goal at the weekend. He had a really good chance from a corner. So it's Burnley, Everton, Luton, West Ham, Bournemouth. I mean, could quite easily keep two or three clean sheets in that run of fixtures. And of course, get a chance at goal. I reckon he could come away with an attack and return from that as well. I'd also say Palace are emerging as one of the best defences in the league so far this season. They're one of the best teams for expected goals conceded. I'd also suggest without Eze and Elise in the team providing any kind of attacking threat for them, I think Roy Hodgson's going to have to rely on that defence to get them through games and get them results, which hopefully means they keep more clean sheets. Gahey's made nine starts this season, kept four clean sheets. That's basically... 50% of the games he started, he's kept a clean sheet in, which bodes well for those upcoming fixtures. I really like him. He's just a little bit boring compared to Simicast. Oh, the midfield. I'm really happy with it. And if Pedro Neto was fit, the potential of him playing Sheffield United was really exciting. Unfortunately, that hamstring injury he picked up, despite the player himself saying he's only going to be out for a couple of weeks, I reckon it could be a month before we see him again. He went off on a stretcher with a hamstring injury. I just don't see how he comes back in a couple of weeks. Salah, Madison, Sack and Bowen, they're all fine. Don't see any reason to get rid of them. I think it would be a bit knee-jerky to get rid of Bowen after just a single blank. Saka, I think he's going to do just fine in the upcoming games. Even though he's got Newcastle away as his next fixture, I really do back him to you know at least get something, either a goal or an assist. I think that's very possible. Madison could do well against Chelsea. Salah is a genuine captaincy option this week, although we'll get on to how... Why is my vice captain at the moment? But against Luton, I think he could do really well as well. So there's no reason to sell any of the midfielders except for Pedro Neto. As most people know, there are a couple of players around Neto's price tag that you could go for. One player I'm not going to mention is Huang. At five and a half million, he does look to be a really good option. But a lot of his goals and attacking returns have come off the end of Neto assists. Without Neto in the team, I'm really not sure what Huang is going to produce. Still feels crazy saying his name. It like I should be censored. 
Uh, Carl Palmer is one option. 5 million. Seems to be nailed in that Chelsea team. Only 4.1% ownership. So he's a nice differential. He's taken up the role, what looks like to be the role at least, of the Chelsea penalty taker. I feel like he's playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder as well after signing for Chelsea. Trying to prove Pep Guardiola wrong for not starting him in more Man City games. And I'd say having watched the Chelsea v Brentford game as well, he was really unlucky not to get a return. The thing putting him down, of course, is that run of fixtures is pretty terrible. Spurs away, top of the league, Man City at home, Newcastle away, and then Brighton and Man United, Chelsea could well score against. But those next three fixtures are going to be really tough for Chelsea, and that kind of puts me off. The easy, simple, sideways move I could make is Neto to Anthony Gordon. I'm going to wait for the games tonight to go ahead. I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon before the kickoff of the Man United Newcastle team. We've got no intel as to whether Gordon even plays in that game, so he could well get a benching, which would be lovely. But he does look to be the first choice left winger now for Newcastle. With Harvey Barnes being injured, there's basically no competition now for that left wing position. He works really hard defensively, which you can tell Eddie Howe really likes. And he's putting up some really decent numbers. He got, he's got an attacking return per start that he's made in the Premier League. Didn't have the best game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, don't get me wrong. And he's got Arsenal at home next, but... The run of fixtures he's got after that, I really do think he can do well in. And who could rule out a goal against Arsenal anyway? Now, on to the attack. Haaland and Watkins. I don't really need to say any more about those guys. But the most important thing to talk about here is who my captaincy is set on. Looking at the draft town expected points, there's 0.1 points between Salah and Haaland this week. So it doesn't really tell you anything, in my opinion. There's very little to split them. And to be honest, I'd say it's almost a 50-50 captaincy week. But what I have done, and I put this in my previous video as well, I've done a little comparison based on all the data I think I would look at in order to determine who is the best captain. You look at the fixture, Salah's got Luton away, Haaland's got Bournemouth at home. Luton, their expected goals conceded so far this season is 20.11, Bournemouth 22.2. So I think the fact he's playing away from home, Kenilworth Road is going to be a tough place to go for anyone. And Luton are slightly better defensively than Bournemouth who Haaland has at the Etihad. I'd also say that Haaland seems to usually perform a bit better at the Etihad than he does away from home. The underlying numbers across the season slightly favour Haaland as well. He's scored more goals and has better expected returns per 90. But of course, Salah, he does get more points for goals than Haaland does. I think all those things considered, I personally think Haaland is the better captain. And this is what I think my team will look like going into game week 11. Obviously, we've got the cup fixtures to play out and an injury update on Udogi to come. Simakas, I think, is going to come in for Dan Byrne. I really like the couple of fixtures he's got coming up. Bit of attacking upside. Liverpool looking really nice defensively. Gordon, I think, is just a sideways move. Easy transfer in for Neto, in my opinion. And I'm very happy to hold on to Gordon. Hopefully, Martinez can finally keep me a clean sheet. And I've gone, of course, for Haaland as captain. 67.1 expected points for this week. If I came away with 67 points, I'd be really happy with that, to be honest. 0.2 million in the bank. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room should any of these players need to be sold next week. But yeah, that's my team. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that and maybe found it useful. Obviously, this is my team. But if any of those moves or thoughts are useful for yours, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a big like rating down below. And of course, subscribe to the Golden Gold channel, which should be just there to see more content from me. And I'll catch you in my next video.